Well, good evening, everyone. Um, and I'd like to welcome Christos Zanussi, who has um, flown in from Siberia this afternoon. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> and departs for Italy first thing in the morning. Uh, that's such is the life of a established filmmaker. Um, I'd like to uh, ask a few questions and then open uh, discussion uh, to you. Um, but first of all, um, you yourself studied physics and uh, also philosophy. So is this film Illumination in some way uh, autobiographical? Well, yes and no, because definitely if you consider that this is a kind of an inner or intellectual biography, yes, it's very close to my biography. But the facts of life which I'm presenting are invented. I didn't marry that young. I have no children. And I didn't ever attempt to commit suicide, as my protagonist did. So there are major differences. And, you know, in my age, I'm in good health. He has problems being... <laughs> <laughs> Your approach to directing the film it, um, consists of short episodes, a narrative is often not connected. You wonder how the character got from one point to another point. You're somehow forced to make connections yourself. This seems to me, uh, I mean, I saw the film, I, I should say, uh, two years after it was made in 1975. And at that time, that seemed quite a radical approach to filmmaking. Um, why did you adopt that approach? Well, you know, it was a time of Nouvelle Vague. It was a time of Jean-Luc Godard. It was a moment when we believed that film language is galloping, developing so fast. Mm -hmm. And the public was following this new language. There were no problems with the audience at that time. Now I am I aware, I'm aware that we made a couple of steps backwards. Mm -hmm. And this kind of language is, I know I will never find a distributor for a film like that today, very unlikely. But this is a change which, in the history of art, happens very often. So there's nothing particularly surprising. But it is true that things that we were able to communicate to the public in the 70s probably were not able to communicate anymore our days. Well, the film do, deals with a lot of uh, philosophical and existential issues. Um, and uh, it seems to end up almost with a conclusion that there, there is no certainty. The quest for certainty is, uh, is illusory. Uh, in the years that have passed since then, have you changed your view? or uh, no, did, no. Was that ever your view? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, fortunately, I have the same opinion. When somebody is certain, it means he is dead. We, don't, <laughs> we must not be certain. We must be open always for questions and we may must never be satisfied with the truth that we have found because there is always a new horizon so we go forward like we go to approach the horizon but we never reach it and i think that's natural dynamic of life and in all respects also in the respect of faith if somebody is very sure of his faith he is very likely to lose it mm -hmm. Um, one question I'd like to ask is about censorship. Was this oh. film subject to censorship? Oh, yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. There were lots of points that the censorship was not happy about, but there is one full sentence, uh, segment, sequence that was cut from the film. It is a sequence about March 68 that they introduced to the film and censors told no. I had to refer to the member of the Politburo, the political bureau of Central Committee of the Communist Party, and I had a privilege to talk to him, and he told me very bluntly and without any, any hesitation, this must be cut from the film because if we allow this sequence to appear, it will be a signal that we are reconsidering the legitimacy of all the changes in 68 and they didn't want to do it and they said definitely if we even if we do it we won't do it the day when you want your film to be released and in fact uh, this whole sequ sequence is gone if you watch very carefully probably Polish people who read all these little letters 
may notice that my protagonist is losing his job in 68 and reappearing for another job in 69. But and there is one still picture of the riots that I was allowed to use. And even this still picture was the first reference to 68 in official art of, 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 the, of, of, of Communist Poland. Okay, I'd like to open it up to questions from the audience. So why do you hesitate one, if to ask the question? I will ask your permission. I, there I there was one at the end. Oh, I'm very happy about it. Back there. But allow me to take yes, a picture do, of do you please. because I yes. must show my wife where I was today, otherwise she will have doubts. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm ready. <laughs> you said that you wouldn't find a distributor for the film like that today. Would you agree with a theory that state sponsorship of arts in whatever country, be it communist Poland or um, capitalist Britain or any other country, that it gives more freedom to the artist than this um, highly commercialized environment which we live in today, uh, which uh, pays sort of disregard to the high art and um, produces masses of uh, so-called Hollywood blockbusters? No, I would strongly disagree because it's very similar to the theory that artists has to be starving in order to be creative. Mm -hmm. And then people apply it even to dogs, what is particularly unfair. Dog, in order to do a dog's job, must be well fed. No, suffering is not something I will consider as a good circumstance for creation. However, in dramatic moments of history, art is usually communicated more important things, more relevant things, than at the time of consumerism, where people, but that's all people, that's not, that's not a system that people who now want to have, to live in peace, and avoid all or most of basic questions of life. Because life is so easy today. It is relatively very easy comparing what it was like under a repressive regime. But I don't wish anybody to live under a repressive regime in order to be better spectator of my films. Yes, a lady and... Yeah, well, you already asked it, sort of, but still would be interesting. Uh, can you just wait for the mic? <laughs> I like the movie as a something historical, but also con contemporary, or like mm -hmm. nowadays, still. Uh, I just, yeah, you already asked, was asked that your point of view has not changed, but still would be interesting to see uh, Illumination 2, <laughs> now that you've grown older. Well, if you're ready to finance it, <laughs> I will be happy to write, okay, so but uh, it's very unlikely that this kind of film can be could be financed our days. But you have a idea. On oh yes, yes. Well, I'm very, I'm very much attached to science even today. But also, My, you said that you should be in doubt. Yes. Uh, I know a little bit what you mean by it, but still, like his wife, mm -hmm. I also like actually her more because she's not so much in his kind of. Doubt. You know what I mean? Well, yes, but that's why they are complementary. Like in a marriage, it should be that we are different and then we complement each other. But uh, no doubt is a natural reflection of cognitive mind. If you don't see that all the, what is certain can be questioned, you are far from, from reality. And all my life through, I was questioning things. I believed the right, and I was finding that, finding that maybe I would go one step forward and find something beyond this line, beyond this horizon. But there is a new horizon appearing, and that's I think is is, is good. I'm I'm happy with it. The question over here.
Thank you very much. Uh, I just had a question regarding the absence of, for example, entertainment and pleasure throughout the characters in the film. Um, well, sort of taking a very uh, general stance on it, even the, for people with the most, you know, uh, uh, intense work ethics, um, through whatever countries or culture they come from, take a, a sort of a moment of mental relief to enjoy and do something that is either habitual or entertaining to them. But why did you leave that out for the characters, especially the main character in this movie? Well, you know, our days, entertainment was considered as very reactionary desire. And in fact, communist life was very tough. But didn't you notice that you watch some ballet scenes when they go, and, they're, and the period when they're uh, before their marriage, there are some references. They they they, they take part in life. They they, they 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 climbing sequence. It is something that you can refer as entertainment. You know, entertainment is a very Anglo-Saxon notion. In we don't use it in Europe at all because <laughs> no no we cannot because you know it's it's well it's a linguistic problem. We call it differently, but I think you 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 mean more relaxed life. And there was very little room for relaxation under communism. So probably it is reflected in the film. Uh, another question towards the back. Hi. Thank you um, for the film. And I, um, it's so uh, still very fresh and there's a lot of um, lots and lots of ideas in the film and I'm interested in the structure of the story and how that evolved if it how much of it was there before shooting and how much of it was there after shooting in the editing room and how, how that developed well it had a script and the script was quite structured but later on I, have to, I had to cut lots of things because it was a new experience. I didn't know really how this kind of story can be told. The biggest cut I've done myself, and the painful one, was the whole sequence I, I, I shot, and it was very, very good sequence, when my protagonist is exposed to the phenomenon of hypnosis. I simply got a very good case, and it was very convincing. And when it was edited, it was ruining the film because we wanted to know more about it. And we thought if he came across something so sensational, why does he do something else? Let him focus on that. So, so sometimes something that is growing too fast is ruining your story. And I still regret that they lost the negative of this long 20 minutes long sequence when he is exposed to hypnosis and somebody is doing experiments and he's part taking part in it and so on and so on. So it's one of the examples of big modules of the film that were just eliminated. There were some others who, that were smaller and were less important. But I had in mind, maybe that was my inspiration, it was Thomas Mann, Dr. Faustus, where you have a mixture of an essay and narrative structure. And I realized that in literature it is so natural. Why not to try in films? And a few years later, one of the great filmmakers, still alive, Alain René, who liked my film, he made his film, Mon, Oncle de, Mon Oncle d'Amérique, my American uh, uncle. And this was his comment to Illumination. He admitted in, in many interviews. So, this combination of essay, scientific essay, and narrative was something what, what was a perspective that cinema could have developed more. But today, it's probably too sophisticated to interest more people than I see here in this room. <laughs> but I found you, that's already a lot. <laughs> Thank you. OK, another. Yeah. 
I'd like to ask you about your mention of New Horizons. Since the film was made, are there any developments, whether in physics or other films, uh, sorry, other fields, which you would have um, been interested or wanted to develop yourself, quite apart from in a filmic study? Oh, very much so, because I think the theoretical physics went very far forward. I didn't have an idea about string theory and when I was shooting this film. Today, I would have focused on that and a totally different cosmological vision and genetics. It went so far forward and it opened so many questions, even more painful than the questions 30 years ago about our identity, about the identity of human being, about the perspective. You know, we have here two electrodes in the brain of the monkey. In fact, monkey was not hard, believe me. I, the scientists do it, but I didn't. I took monkey that was completely safe, and uh, these electrodes were only put on the glue, so the crane was not damaged. Anyway, uh, today, the, 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 the possibilities of mixing human person and all kinds of electronic uh, inventions is, is really very frightening and surprising and maybe promising. Maybe we'll have additional memory in our pocket or under our skin and then each of us will be a genius and will learn one foreign language per, per one, one evening. You know, all these perspectives didn't exist when I was shooting this film. So I would be happy to, to make another one today. Are any of your future projects uh, dealing with scientific themes? Not at this moment, because it's so difficult to finance something that has to do with science. Science doesn't seem to be entertaining nowadays, even if it is entertaining for people who know more about it. But I make reference to science in many of my films I'm shooting now, not so directly as I did in this film. Question right at the back, and then one right at the front. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it is my impression that the movie starts very much as a essay, actually as an essay, very thoughtful, very dry as a style, but then shifts very much towards impressions in the second part. Was that, maybe it's just my impression, but that's the impression I had. And I was wondering whether that was done on purpose all that came during the filming and the editing? Well, it, you are absolutely right, your observation, I, I share it. I wrote it this way. I wasn't even aware, but when I've seen the first edited uh, uh, version of the film, I realized that you have to establish some basic situation. And this is done in the first part of the film. You know what kind of character he is, what kind of interest he has, what are the limits, and then it becomes more existential. It is not more exploiting. The, there, are, there are lots of information in the first part, that's true. That's why it is far more dry. And as you know, this film is going now to appear on DVD, uh, having second line, I think you have it in your pocket. But it was, uh, no, but I wanted to make a reference, and you will show it later, it is your... <laughs> <laughs> your task, but uh, I was commenting this on this film now, and I was recording a screening in Cuba when Fidel Castro was supposed to decide if this film can be shown at the opening of Polish Film Week. Nobody else could decide <laughs> but him. And he has seen only the first part of the film, and just by unhappy coincidence, the tape has broken and the projection was stopped. I was the only viewer and him in Ikaik screening hall. And he was so crossed with me, he was so furious, saying that this film is a reactionary film because he has seen this first part. And then the most dramatic question happened. The projectionist came and said, should we continue or not? And he hesitated for a moment, 
for me it was eternity. But finally he said, all right, show us the rest. And when he had seen the rest, he became more conciliatory. He said, I don't like the film, but you, you can show it. <laughs> and then he has given me the, the, the reason. He said, maybe this film will encourage Cuban youth to learn science. <laughs> so pragmatic approach. But it saved me. So, you know, the first part made this very bad impression because the young people are talking about the motivation, why do they study? And he didn't like what they said. And he said, none of them speaks about socialism. So what kind of youth you have in Poland? <laughs> There's another question at the front. Uh, yeah. uh, what I wanted to ask was, it, the film seemed to be very much part of its time as well, not just uh, seeing it now, of course, it's completely different from seeing it back in the early 70s uh, when I saw it. And there's some references in the film uh, which seem it was located in the time and maybe the spirit of the time too. And it goes beyond the time, I have to say too. But for instance, okay, it mentions um, LSD as one part of it, where science meets the senses, maybe up to the senses take you elsewhere, and that seems very much part of the occasion. You, uh, did you actually take LSD? Did that have any influence over the way that you showed the film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very hard for me to judge. I, <laughs> I, I made it best way I could. I felt very free because I was still sufficiently unexperienced to feel free. And I took the risk, and it could have been a deadly risk, because it could be a, there was no guarantee that this film will be presentable. Finally, it was screened quite a lot, and it had a quite decent run from the commercial point of view, but it could have been all the way different. So. The time was that we were more courageous in terms of our dialogue with the public was more, we were more trustful and we believed the public is willing to, to be exposed to serious problems. Today nobody should elude himself that this is the case. A lot of your films are, well, most of your films are concerned with um, issues of science, morality, faith and so forth. Um, I'm just wondering to what extent, uh, I mean, what was your connection with Kislovsky, for instance? Because it seems to me there's almost a continuation from your work through Kislovsky's work and even maybe to Yakimovsky's work, films which are dealing with sort of ab almost abstract issues. Well, that's what I have to say about Yakimovsky. I like his work, but I, I definitely... I, uh, Kieślowski was my very close friend and he was my younger colleague in the film school and then he was a deputy in the production company, state production company Tor, when I was a president and we had a very close relationship, very unusual among the artists because, you know, directors, we never collaborate like conductors, they never do. And fortunately I had these two friendships with two great geniuses of, of cinema that was my younger colleague Kieślowski and it was Tarkovsky. With both of them I had some sort of a real friendship. And was Kieślowski ever influenced by my work? I have no idea. Maybe yes, maybe not. That would be up to him to say. Or maybe not even up to him to judge because you know influence is a natural thing. We were playing the same game and Naturally, we have exchanged lots of opinions. I wonder what would be, what would have happened to Hislovsky has he been alive today, but unfortunately he's not. In fact, the man who is, the young man who is playing leading part in this film, died very soon after the film was over, and he died very tragically in the mountains. He went to Himalayas with the expedition. <coughs> And allegedly, wanting to help another colleague, he was frozen to death. So this is also for me some kind of tragic reference to this. To this, he was a filmmaker. In fact, he was not not a physicist. I think we're going to have to finish, unfortunately. Uh, I'd just like to say that. Uh, this film, Illumination, is one of three which are being released by a second run DVD in April. And here is the proof. <laughs> Illumination. Illumination. Um, 
that will be available in April. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, Christoph Sanusi very much for your answering our questions tonight. And um, best of luck with your new film. And I hope some of those scripts about uh, science and physics come to fruition. <laughs> what about the new film then? What is the My movie? new film is made, is, is, is intended to be done in defense of women against feminists. <laughs> or in other words, because I have to be very cautious, it's an explosive issue. So when I speak about feminism, I make a distinction, it's my own invention, that feminism is like cholesterol. There is good cholesterol and bad <laughs> cholesterol, the same with feminism. We suffer very much in Central Europe, this wave of very superficial and very destructive feminism that tries to make women more career-oriented and more scrupulous than men. And this is something that I strongly oppose. So in my film, young men will be a victim in a big corporation of terrible women. But that's not a generalization. Nobody should take it personally. I mean, some women are like that, but not all of them, for sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't answer back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.